Hello and a warm welcome to Federal Special Program, Capital Beat. Delhi gets a new Chief Minister. Atishi Marlena Singh is the new Chief Minister designate. And just a short while back, Arvind Kejriwal has tendered his resignation to LG, VK Saxena. Now, what Arvind Kejriwal said two days before, or rather three days before, he said that he will seek the certificate of honesty from the people, and it is the people who will decide whether he returns as the CM, implying that if he wins the Delhi election, then he returns as the chief minister. He has also sought for early polls in Delhi, which is in November, coinciding with Jharkhand and Maharashtra. But with Atishi Marlena Singh on the CM chair and Arvind Kejriwal now deciding to go and mingle with the people. What does it mean for Delhi politics in the months to come? And will BJP be on a back foot? And what does it mean in the larger context of the politics as far as BJP vis-a-vis -vis India Alliance are concerned? Joining me now is Siddharth Sharma, who's an independent media analyst. Thank you so much, Siddharth, for joining. He very closely tracks Amadmi Party. We have uh, Puneet Nicholas Yadav, who's a senior editor with the Federal. Thanks, Puneet, so much for joining. We have TK Raj Lakshmi, who's a senior deputy editor of the Frontline. Thank you so much, uh, Raj Lakshmi. And I'll begin with Siddharth Sharma. That Siddharth, uh, the very idea of uh, announcing Atishi Marlena's name as a CM designate. Now, <clears throat> many feel that this is a master stroke. Some sections feel that it is a compromise and a very pragmatic approach, which uh, which apparently Kejriwal has taken because he didn't have any other option. So how would you analyze this situation? I think uh, we need to understand that uh, to understand Arvind Kejriwal, we need to understand he's a little bit like Rishabh Pant. Which bat, which ball he defends and which ball he goes for a six, we don't know. So two days ago, he bowled a very big googly by saying that I will resign. And after that, uh, the BJ entire BJP ecosystem was ready for... Uh, Sunita Kejriwal and Atishi came out of the syllabus basically and that's why they've been caught off guard. I'm very surprised that if I would have been a BJP uh, supporter or I would have been in the BJP ecosystem, I would have told them at least to hold their horses till... No, no, uh, yeah, Siddha, just sorry to interrupt you for a few seconds, but why do you assume that Sunita Kejriwal's name was propelled only by BJP? It could have been Aam Aadmi Party also, people also who could have planted that Sunita Kejriwal is going to be the next CM. Why only no. we blame <clears throat> or... But the point is, BJP spokespersons on television and in statements have clearly said that uh, they were they were getting ready for Sunita Kejriwal. Anyway, now Ms. Sunita Kejriwal is no more the chief ministerial candidate. So what has essentially happened is that BJP, uh, because we have to understand that uh, just a few days ago, uh, there was a very... Uh, very heated exchange between the two presidential candidates of United States, Trump and Kamala Harris. Yet when they started off, there was a courtesy handshake between both of them and both of them said, let us have a good debate. And today what has happened is that the minute uh, Atishi's name came up as the chief minister, BJP going hammer and tongs against her without even giving a courtesy uh, goodwill message or good wishes goes on to show that BJP is pretty rattled. Now coming back to the your main question, uh, Ahmadmi Party is not a very old party like Congress 125 years or BJP 40 years. It's just a 10 year, 12 year old party. So most of us have seen its inception and its growth. So a uh, party which has, which all of us, most of the people have seen since its inception and its growth. Obviously, some of uh, the, uh, the people would be supportive of Ahmadmi Party. Some of it, uh, some of them would be uh, opposing Ahmadmi Party, and some of them would also be neutrals. Uh, all the three would agree that Aam Aadmi Party does its politics in a little bit of a different way, a little bit of a futuristic way. That is why it invests 25% of its budget on education of your children, be it Delhi or be it Punjab. So what has essentially happened is that Adi, Atishi has adroitly managed education department of the Delhi government for the last one and a half years in the absence of Manish Sisodia. Now it is natural that whatever part political crescendo it will reach in the upcoming elections, Aam Aadmi Party has given a message to its voters uh, forget about the crescendo during the election campaign or the run-up to the elections. Aam Aadmi Party has given a message to the voters of Delhi that the future of 17 lakh school kids is not compromised. Now, please understand, 17 lakh school kids means 17 lakh families. That would translate to nearly 70 lakh people, 60-70 lakh voters. In one shot, Aam Aadmi Party has given a message to its core voter base 
that your future your children's future whatever is going to happen in on the political front we will ensure that it will not suffer there will be continuity because atishi was the education minister so i think bjp uh, the simple fact that they they have started going uh, i i am not saying that nobody should uh, uh, bjp is a opposition party in uh, uh, delhi so it has every right to attack atishi but attacking on the first day without even giving a goodwill message or a uh, um, uh, good wishes goes on to show that bjp is pretty rattled and i think right now amanti party is playing on the front foot as i said earlier uh, predicting arvind kejriwal is like predicting what rishabh pant will do in the next ball he can go for he can toss it for a six or he can defend it he can, he can do anything okay now let me get in puneet here puneet uh, how would you see putting atishi marlena singh on the cm's chair what do you think is the broader message as far as aam aadmi party is concerned would you see it this as a compromise formula where they didn't have too many options of course and they have now had atishi uh, i'm not saying that she is not competent she was handling at, at many portfolios she's she has an urban demeanor she's educated and uh, she knows how to maneuver uh, with the bureaucrats with the lg but uh, why do you think that atishi was the one who who has won arvind kejriwal's trust for this uh, post uh well thank you nilu you know i mean the party choosing atishi uh of course it's well within the rights of the aam aadmi party and its mlas whoever they want to choose they choose uh this is not a chief minister who's going to stay for 5 years it's i would call at best a caretaker government Hmm. and a caretaker chief minister for a period of 4 months or right. you know maybe earlier if the ec uh, you know goes for an early election uh, maybe you know 5 months if the elections happen on schedule in february but there are a few points here that i would want to stress on see the other day when we were discussing the developments in delhi i had briefly recounted the five or six key takeaways which i thought uh, arvin's decision uh, you know to resign had now adding to that because now today formally we know that atishi has uh, been brought in as the cm she was the front runner i had even initially uh, been of the view that they will not bring in sunita kejriwal uh and that is what has happened atishi was even in the preliminary discussions uh, of day before yesterday then the discussions of yesterday she had been the front runner she has been brought in so no surprises there but look at the messaging you know th there is always a great premium that i place on political messaging when it comes to uh, any decision uh, you know forget radical decision like this one but even small you know day to day government functioning decisions what great purpose does bringing atishi in serve beyond the very visible thing of you know safe kejriwal hoodwink the bjp what was what was the statement from atishi immediately after she you know after arvind kejriwal resigned today just half an hour you know 20 25 minutes back she said and she was basically repeating what gopal rai had said earlier in the day that as chief minister i have two responsibilities two primarily uh, primary responsibilities my first responsibility now you know the order of the two is important she said my first responsibility is to work in a way for the next 4 months or whatever time i have which will ensure that arvind kejriwal comes back as the chief minister hmm. my second priority is that uh, the work that we've been doing for the last 10 years despite the hurdles created by the bjp and the lg continue as they are uh, as they've been happening you know and uh, we continue to deliver on those promises of free bijli education healthcare etc etc now i mean are you is there a chief minister whose remit is to ensure that somebody else comes back as chief minister for the you know after 4 months is that your remit 
as what the chief minister. Trying to, what you said, I'm just trying to relate with what I think Saurabh Bharadwaj said that Atishi will uh, will be treated as the Bharat of uh, Bharat, Bharat uh, while Ra Lord Ram is away. You know, all these, of course, these tropes oh, that they bring in. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. When Ram went for Vanvas, Bharat put her, yes. khada, you know, Ram's khadao on the throne and ruled yes. and all of that. Now, fine. I have, uh, as I said in the beginning, it's a choice that the party has made. Uh, they're free to do so. Fine. So, uh, you know, uh, how it pans out over the next four months, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I have, uh, I personally do not hold a very high view of Atishi as an administrator, uh, because like most of the other leaders of the Ahmadmi party, her own role during the Northeast Delhi riots, and this I know from personal experience, was very dubious. I know of enough number of people who, and including myself, who reached out to her personally for help, and a couple of other MLAs who I don't want to name because right now we're discussing Atishi. Uh, and they refused to help. And after a point, they switched off their phones, you know, or they were not available on the phone when you would call. So all that aside, fine, the party has taken a call. She's the chief minister. Now, the next aspect of it, could, could the Ahmadmi party have sent a bigger message, a more broader message? Uh, and that is where I think the AAP has missed an opportunity. Uh, okay. Because they've, they're not able to see beyond the immediate thing of Kejriwal. How do you, uh, you know, go ahead with what Kejriwal has said? You know, I want to be declared innocent by the people and all of that. Uh, I don't. I mean, there's even that is up for discussion on the uh, repercussions and ramifications of that pitch. But that's a different matter. Let's leave that for now. Delhi has a population of. 20% of its population are Dalits. Neighboring Haryana, where elections are due, where Amadmi Party is contesting, also has 20% Dalits. Punjab, where the Amadmi Party has a government, has 23% Dalits. Fine, you wanted to give a woman chief minister. Now, again, on the issue of women leadership and all of that, uh, you know, the AAP has a pretty checkered history. So don't forget that it was only a year and a half back that Atishi was brought into the cabinet. Uh, and before that, the Amadmi party never, you know, for, uh, for eight, eight and a half years, uh, and particularly, you know, in 2019, when they won the mandate again, uh, there was no woman in their, in their cabinet, not a single woman. Yes, that's right. For a long time of the MPs that they were sending to the Rajya Sabha, there was no woman. You know, so now it suits the narrative. So you have a woman uh, face fine. Every political party does that. But could they have done more? Could they have, you know, sent two messages simultaneously? The, one of the biggest messages nationally, I'm not talking about Delhi, but nationally today is social justice. Social justice and, of course, uh, the issue of communal harmony, etc. On right. that, again, on the latter, again, the Amadmi party has a very patchy record on the issue of relig uh, religious minorities, etc. You, you said that uh, no. AAP has an opportunity and then you listed out the population yeah. of the Dalits uh, in various yes. states. So, you, so, think you know, yesterday, a... right? Yeah. So I was coming to that. Yesterday, when the names were being discussed, one of the names that was discussed was Rakhi Gadla. Right. She's a founding member of the Amadmi party. She's a second term, uh, I think, a, a, a second or, or now third term MLA. She's currently the deputy speaker of the Delhi Assembly. She, of course, doesn't come with the privilege, uh, with the privilege and, she, you know, the, the foreign education of Atishi and the sophistication that Atishi brings to the table. But she comes from the Dalit community. Uh, it's also a community which the Ahmadmi party has not been able to handle properly over the last, uh, you know, 11 years of its uh, existence. Over the last one year alone, they've lost two of their most prominent Dalit faces. Rajan Pal Gautam, who had to quit from the ministry and went out. And he was a, uh, mind you, he was a very, very well-regarded man. 
unlike the next one who uh, also quit. But Rajen Pal Gautam was a very well regarded Dalit leader in Delhi. And he recently, just um, uh, two weeks back, joined the Congress. In fact, on the same day that the Congress had initiated discussions for an alliance with the, uh, with the Amadmi Party for Haryana. And the first thing that he said, uh, although in a very guarded way, because the alliance talks was on, were on, was that everything else with the Amadmi Party, I am OK with. But the Aam Aadmi Party's track record on speaking up for Dalits, minorities, and tribals is very patchy. It, it, they do not speak up for Dalits when they need to. The AAP, by choosing a woman Dalit, could have sent out a bigger political message. Right. That's a very important point. And, and it uh, would have been a political message that they could have capitalized on even in Haryana, hmm. of course, in Delhi, and as time comes, in Punjab and nationally. They right. missed that opportunity because of the very narrow, you know, blink uh, kind of myopic view of political gains for Delhi. Uh, that is my view. Uh, right. So I think a missed opportunity in that sense. Yes, yeah, so it's a missed opportunity as far as picking the Dalit face. Siddharth, I want you to respond to this. It's a very significant point which Bonita has raised, and then I'll go to Raj Lakshmi. Yes, sir, Siddharth. Yeah, I think that's a very significant significant point that social justice and Dalit empowerment are... I, have, very... I haven't actually read this point anywhere so far. I've been tracking the social media way, way closely since morning. I haven't come across this point. And, you know, uh, sorry, I uh, uh, sorry, Neelu. So I, I was saying two Dalit faces that the Ahmadmi party has lost in recent months. The first, Rajan Pal Gautam, and then Rajkumar Anand, who's now with the BJP. Yeah. Right. And these were the two main Dalit faces of the party. They've mm -hmm. lost both of them. Right. They could have capitalized this occasion. Yeah. Absolutely. Sorry. Yes, Siddharth, yeah. must Sorry. respond on this. Yes. Yeah. One thing we need to be, we, we um, uh, there is absolutely no doubt that especially these Lok Sabha elections have clearly uh, shown to India that uh, social justice and Dalit empowerment are very important factors in the psyche of people of India. There is absolutely no doubt about it. Now, uh, Delhi, if ha it has a 20% Dalit population. Punjab has a higher Dalit population than Delhi, but still Ahmadmi party won in Punjab with a humongous majority. I think there are two ways. I think a Dalit today, uh, a Dalit today cannot be compared to a Dalit of 50 years ago. A Dalit today is, he might not be that empowered, but he has certain informations with him. On the social ladder, I accept that he's uh, uh, well below the others, but yet he understands things. And he clearly understands that giving symbolic, creating some symbolic islands of excellence uh, doesn't hold good for a Dalit common man. For example, BJP can also say that they have brought in a Dalit uh, uh, president of India. But that did not cut ice with the people of India in these elections. Even though BJP brought in a Dalit prime minister, tribal prime minister, with a lo lot of... Us. So you you say that AAP has not missed the bus, as what Puneet was saying. No, I'm my 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 key argument is now coming. What has ha what happens is that uh, there is two things. There is something called as Antyodaya and there is something called as Sarvodaya. Uh, Gandhi ji used to say about Sarvodaya. What happens is that when you give universal education, you give universal healthcare, or you give universal free electricity, obviously the biggest beneficiary is going to be the Dalit and the downtrodden, na? So, Aam Admi Party, without going into without going into symbolic gestures, without going into creating islands of excellence, what it is doing is that by giving universal free electricity, it is ensuring that the Dalits and the marginalized people are the most benefited. I think Aam Admi Party, that's why I said Aam Admi Party plays politics in a little bit of a different way. It does not get into, uh, I accept um, uh, uh, what he said earlier, but this is how I think Aam Admi plays it. Say that you will call it a difference or you'll call it political convenience of Mr. Arvind Kejriwal. No, it is it is up it, now. What is going to happen is that either in two months or in, in four months, these decisions will be taken up by the people. People will give a verdict on it. My reading is that Am Admi Party sees it differently. Somebody might uh, somebody else might have a difference of opinion, and I'm I'm totally agreeable to that. But my counterpoint here is that. Aam Admi Party, without resorting to symbolism, also ensures that the Dalits, that the, the, 
the the highest benefit reaches the dalits and we don't know ab uh, aam aadmi party's door to door volunteer or a booth volunteer may be right now going to delhi uh, to a dalit uh, house and saying that is it not true that uh, in the last 5 10 years your children have uh, started getting world class education and he might get convinced by it. you won't you won't acknowledge that point which punit mentioned but i have to take this discussion to a larger point yeah. coming back to uh, tk rajlakshmi uh how would you uh, see this uh, sudden development where ratishi now has been announced as a cm arvind kejriwal goes to the people do you think the bjp really is now dumbstruck it doesn't know what to do and uh, it will really have to recalibrate uh, its uh, next moves you know and uh, in the coming months so it's going to be a tough going for bjp yeah i think uh, uh, you know i think nilu of all the choices available to the aap uh, i think atishi uh, uh, seems to be the best uh, also for the also for the fact that she's a female you know she's a woman and uh, uh, and in fact you know the awami party has been uh, has been uh, sort of pitching on uh, on the votes or support you know of uh, huh, of the women of delhi you know, in a big way because this whole thing about you know price rise inflation how it affects the household and how um, and how you know women have to sort of balance the household so your free electricity your free education and all the various things that awami party has done i mean of course there are several things that are good also uh, so so to ensure that it sort of continues you know so here you have you know a woman who can best understand all these things okay how a household is run and uh, and how these things you know affect the economy of a uh, of a household unit now and of course you know all these things i think perhaps be part of the campaign etc i mean i, mean, I do not know how it's a little early to say all that but i think of all the people that the aam aadmi party had uh, i think uh, it didn't have you know so much of a choice you know because everybody else was was so called you know tainted right uh, uh, i think barring for sora bharatwaj or for mr gopal rai or for atishi or uh, or for that matter uh, uh, mr gelot also right uh, kalash gelot so so i think the options were i think limited and and i think among these options she had a, she has emerged in her own skin you know as a uh, uh, as a fairly competent spokesperson and uh, you know quite aggressive also uh, and she has been the face of the party in fact you know, let's face it you know more than gopal rai sora bhadar uh, sort of bharadwaj yes to an extent but atishi has been the face you know has been uh, has been the face overall no, but uh, and, uh, rasa lakshmi yeah. come to the point which you just pointed out but yeah. atishi is compared to gopal rai sora bharadwaj even kalash gelot she yeah. is way more in inexperience i'm not saying that she is not competent but yeah. looking at the kind of experience which uh, kalash gelot or uh, gopal rai bring in she will still be tr- treated as a very junior uh, a uh, person as compared to these big leaders so do you think that this can lead to some kind of resentment even though her tenure is going to be like a very short one uh, till the time the next government is not elected see, yeah see you know i i in fact doubt it you know uh, i think barring for a few uh, uh few you know people who have sort of been quite unhappy for instance uh, there was mr gautam who uh, in fact puneet also sort of mentioned and uh, uh swati maliwal who's gone on a limp now to attack uh, to attack her etc uh, to uh, to attack atishi i think everybody else you know has uh, i mean has accepted her i mean i do not think there has there has been any sort of protest either from aam aadmi party party workers or or i think the leadership also the, uh, in fact when i say leadership the other the other leaders you know the ministry so so i think so i think there is an acceptance and she may be young yes but she's been associated with the aam aadmi party right from the beginning i mean she was an advisor i think to uh, sisodia also you know when he was a minister uh, when he was education minister yes. so she's had experience and she's held you know portfolios i mean she was given those portfolios she was inducted uh, when all this crisis blew in the face of the aam aadmi party so she was given as many as 14 portfolios is what i read right so which is a huge huge i mean of course it, uh, it was a huge burden on her to uh, i mean the first place so i think uh, uh, i think being uh, being a woman i think the awadi party has also sent out you know uh, sent out you know a message um, and uh, i mean i mean i'm not uh, i mean i think that i think that it's a good decision i mean i think you know overall i think it's a good decision but but uh, but but of course you know there are, there are several things you know as punit also said that the awadi party will need to uh, Was sort of reckoned with, uh, you know, especially its its entire, you know. I mean, of course, it didn't have so much to handle, you know, in the, uh, you know, the northeast Delhi riots, considering that law and order, you know, were not 
in fact, it's remit, but it could have done, I mean, in the sense of being more, you know, responsive, I think, definitely, because there's no issue about that, you know. No, but and, uh, me, when yeah. it comes to Patishi, uh, we, of yeah. course, know that she has uh, handled the bureaucrats well. She's tried to coordinate with the LG as well. But now in the coming months, since K. Jival is going to be on the street, he's going to be with the people and mm -hmm. she on the CM chair. Do you think that the LG also will have a tough going now saying things to uh, uh, to Atishi? And uh, it can't be like what it was before with when Arvind K. Jival was the CM. Yeah. yeah, of course, definitely, because she's not, you know, tainted, as I said, you know, she's not tainted. She doesn't have any uh, any allegation of that sorts. Yes, of course, you know, she can be accused of other things of not being sort of responsive, etc. at that level. But as far as, you know, governance is concerned, you know, I mean, I mean as far as, let's say, let's say, um, uh, I mean, her reputation is concerned, you know, you know, it's not, uh, it's not, you know, blemished as, uh, you know, as compared to the others. So here yeah. you have, a, uh, I mean, yeah, you, so you have a clean image, you know, you you have a clean image of a person who is okay, she's young she she maybe does not have age on her side but then but then she has some experience you know of uh, of governance I mean definitely yes so as compared to maybe to Raki Birlan uh, etc she has an advantage you know and uh, uh, and and I think I think she also sort of emerges as a very combative uh, combative personality uh, to take on you know the BJP's uh, right. you know rhetoric i mean i mean i mean very sad that she had to drop you know her um, her middle name you know marlena i mean it's it's really sad the way things have really uh, dipped to such a low in our politics you know which is obviously thanks to the bjp for you know making all these things an issue you know that you drop you know marlena because they say she's an outsider she's christian or that she's communist because her parents named her that way etc so uh, it's also been sad you know uh, and the uh, and the Amadi Party, yes, it has to it, it has to survive, you know, in politics also. So, uh, of course, you know. So, so I think to that extent, it has made certain compromises, and um, but right. hopefully, yeah. So hopefully, it will. It, will, it should have been stronger, I think, because you know, it improved its vote share, uh, uh, you know, as compared to the 2019 polls. You know, uh, that, uh, you know, I mean, it contested on a fewer number of seats, but its percentage share, you know, went up by. Six percent. So, right. so I think as far as the state assembly elections are concerned, I think the Aadmi Party is on a good wicket. And since that corruption taint is not on her, right? It all depends on her, right. on how the candidate campaign right. forward. So, yeah. I'll come for the concluding remarks first to Puneet and then to Siddharth for the final answer. But Puneet, uh, now does this move really? I want to ask you two questions, and if you could answer them briefly, that uh, now the challenges for BJP increase. And the second part is that what are the challenges now for Atishi Marlena? Is she going to be a subject of, uh, you know, like uh, more of scrutiny, more of manipulation? How, how does one see it as far as BJP's uh, goings on are concerned? Oh, well, uh, as far as Atishi is concerned, see, she is basically going to be, uh, and, <laughs> you know, she's not even made an effort to hide the fact and it's something everyone knows that she's going to be a rubber stamp chief minister because the basic idea is that you're there for four months and as she herself has said trying to ensure that kejriwal comes back to power okay now we'll have to wait and see what the new cabinet looks like because there will have to be a new cabinet sworn in when you have a new chief minister he has to now it may of course be all the same ministers as before uh with you know two additions because now there are two vacancies in the in the uh, in the council but uh it, we'll have to see what kind of ministers is there a course correction there uh i'm hearing that uh you know they will possibly bring in one dalit face and one uh you know possibly a woman or uh maybe someone from a religious minorities a, a muslim uh so they might do a balancing act there so we are hearing, you know, different things there. Uh, the uh, so how they proceed, I don't think will be any different from how they have done so over the last few years because the areas of their priority are very clear. Uh, they are not going to change. Their problems with the BJP and the LG are not going to change. They are going to remain the same. What is interesting to me is, you know, both the BJP 
and the aam aadmi party repeatedly saying early elections kara lo we are today even viren sachdeva the bjp president said uh, we are ready to have elections in october forget november hum to october mein karwane ko taiyar hain now the point is you know it's very interesting that unlike other states where you know to pave way for early elections you need to you know it is the chief minister's thing to write to the governor ask for a dissolution of the assembly and then you know the recommendation for uh, an early poll is is sent across to the ec in delhi it is not only the chief minister who can dissolve the assembly in delhi as per the gnct act even the lieutenant governor has the power to dis dissolve the assembly right you know so if the bjp is in a mood to have early elections uh, we know how uh, you know fair the lieutenant governor of delhi is then the lieutenant governor can dissolve the assembly mm. going for early elections if the aam mm. aadmi party wanted early elections why did you need to bring in a chief minister for uh, you know two months or three months or four months you could have asked for a dissolution of the assembly put the ball in the bjp squad gone on the offensive ki kara lo chunav abhi you know let the people decide who is going to come back so i find that you know this whole thing of uh, uh, you know if the early elections are to happen dissolve the assembly this that and the other i find it very amusing because neither of them actually seem to want it even if the the aam aadmi party has an edge and as, as i said the other day i still believe that despite their failures despite problems despite the attempts of corruption all of that the aam aadmi party is still the best place to win and win comfortably in delhi i still believe that but then this whole bogey of early elections i i just can't wrap my head or head around it you know right so i mean both of them have the power to ask for it so so what's the problem the congress of course has no local stand i here Absolutely. So, Siddharth, I want you to respond to this, and I also want you to respond to one point which we missed throughout the discussion, and we are at the fag end of it. That uh, the way uh, Swati Malewal has responded today, and uh, I was reading somewhere just a short while back that uh, apparently Aam Aadmi Party has uh, sought her resignation. Now, is there a confirmation that she's going to resign? Uh, what is the update on that? I want your response on both these things, and then I'm wind. I'll wind up the show. Yes. Since. Uh... i do not hold any brief for either swati maliwal or aam aadmi party what's going on between them but uh, for a uh, layman i can say that a person who got elected on aam aadmi party ticket if she is going hammer and tongs anybody is going hammer and tongs against that same party the so everyone is expected to everyone will say that why are you still in that party i think that answers it but the larger question here is that uh, please understand uh, a strange thing has happened a few months ago in the afternoon Uh, mr nitish kumar resigned as the bihar chief minister and in the evening he took another oath as the bihar chief minister because he had changed parties by then now in delhi today the sitting chief minister has resigned in the evening and he has uh, shown that 60 people 62 mls have supported a new person what is stopping the lg from swearing in that person as, as chief minister as early as possible i'll tell you what Uh, the bjp is in a bit of a catch 22 situation i don't even know whether the lg will uh, easily call atishi to swear, to take a swearing in simply because before this happened today the delhi assembly has been convened on 26th and 27th so what is going to happen in the on, on that day is that the new uh, atishi being the new chief minister the youngest chief minister of india a lady chief minister a most educated chief minister can bring in a bill saying that since arvind kejriwal a few months ago had promised that i i'll give you 1000 rupees to every uh, woman in delhi and since delhi government is running in profit it doesn't have any loss so we have we are passing a bill by giving 1000 rupees to all the women in delhi universal uh, uh, basic income now please understand after that uh, bill comes into effect in the you know, delhi assembly uh, will the bjp uh, lieutenant general sign it or stop it because signing it would mean suicide stopping it would mean becoming a villain bjp becoming a villain so i think there is a lot of things to happen now i think what is essentially happened is that the ball is back in bjp's court now 
uh, if if at all this would have been so smooth uh, today itself atishi should have been sworn in as the chief minister by not doing that bjp is showing that it is still pretty nervous about the entire thing they know that once the atishi is sworn in as the chief minister e easily uh, the, the assembly is already 26th and 27th already convened we know that according to the plan arvind kejriwal had already announced before going to jail that i am going to give 1000 rupees to all my sisters in delhi universal basic income to women so what is stopping ahmed bhi party in the next two days in the next three days to uh, announce that once that is announced how can either bjp cannot either say that i am going to stop it cannot bjp either bjp cannot even say that i am going to pa pass it so i think th there are a few uh, surprises twists and turns still and i think it's bjp is like a, basically bjp is like a cat on a hot tin roof it doesn't know how to stand how it has, it has to keep dancing it doesn't not have any option here all right so but i won't be ready to accept the fact that you know uh, aam aadmi party is not on a back foot of course they've made a smart move but whether it uh, turns out to be a master stroke or some kind of a compromise will be decided by the people of course after the elections are over and the kind of result which comes in but yes aam aadmi pa party does seem to have an edge but now the big question when will atishi marlena be sworn in as a chief minister is there any other political game which bjp is planning jury is out on that so let's we'll end it here thank you so much uh, uh, sadat sharma puneet rajesh it was wonderful having you on the program and one appeal to the viewers who are watching this discussion subscribe to our channel send us a feedback and stay tuned to the fed